With the launch of the 2020 iPad Pros, Apple has also announced that iPadOS will now natively support trackpad input, and they went as far to redesign things. They made a new cursor, they've added gestures very similar to that of Mac OS, and I actually had to go out today and buy a new Magic Trackpad 2 at Best Buy, because apparently my 10-year-old Magic Trackpad isn't good enough and won't support the gestures. That's planned obsolescence on Apple's part. But anyway, I set everything up. I set up my iPad Pro with the trackpad and a Magic Keyboard, and I've been using it with both these accessories for a little while and I have to say um, this new input seems like the future um, we're getting closer and closer to an iPad Pro like device replacing laptops or kind of merging with them and I'm very excited to kind of demo this in front of you and talk about why I'm so optimistic and just enjoying this new input that Apple has designed but before we continue here I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video comment if you have any questions suggestions or opinions as the YouTube algorithm likes that and will help push my content to more people so here we have my iPad Pro 11 inch my newly bought Magic Trackpad and my Magic Keyboard, which is going to kind of be out of the frame because it does take up a lot of space. And as you can see here, both of these devices are connected like any other Bluetooth accessory in the Bluetooth settings. So first up, let's talk about interacting with the home screen. So if you want to swipe through your apps, all you have to do is take two fingers and swipe left and right, just like you would on a Mac when you're in like the launch pad, for example, where you have all your apps open. Um, it's very, very simple. And as you can see here, when I drag the circle cursor around here, um, different apps and UI elements sort of have their own gravity like the cursor is kind of drawn to them to make interaction more easy so as you can see here I can open up the camera app by dragging the cursor towards the camera app and it just kind of sucks it in and I can click it and here we are and then if I want to get out of an app all I have to do is either drag my cursor down and click the little line icon which you usually swipe up on to go home or just take three fingers and swipe up to go back home and if you want to get to the app switcher you just swipe up with three fingers and then you can also swipe through apps with two fingers obviously just like the apps on the home screen and then if you want to quit an app, for example, you can take two fingers and swipe up um, like you would with your fingers. So you kind of can treat this cursor like your finger. That's what Craig Federighi said or Apple said in their um, little demonstration video that they posted on some obscure channel for some reason. So that's some basic interaction for you. But of course, there's so much more to all of this. You can interact with the control center by hovering your cursor over the top right portion of your screen where the uh, Wi-Fi signal and the battery icon are located. And if you click on that, the control center will pop out and you can, of course, interact with all the other settings like you would normally be able to um, with a finger you can click off that to get out of it if you want to access the notification panel you don't like swipe down or anything you actually bring your cursor up and just kind of keep pushing up until it comes down as you can see here once again I'll demonstrate this you just kind of like bring the cursor up and then the notification panel will drop down and of course you can go back home by just swiping up with three fingers and when you're in an app for example I think I have two open here yeah I do I'll show you that in a minute if you want to access your dock you don't have to swipe up or anything you actually just bring your cursor down and keep bringing it down until the dock pops up like so and also of course you can drag apps like you would with your finger into this sort of multitasking mode so I can bring YouTube over here just drag and drop and then scroll through that as well scrolling works throughout every app there are some apps that don't have like the UI popping elements to them like you have here with Safari like YouTube it's not really working with these little tabs here or these buttons at the bottom but I think that will come with time and optimization from developers and of course you can have carousel apps open as well multiple in fact let me just bring out good notes for example here as well and you can actually swipe through them like you would on like an iPhone which is super cool with three fingers and of course dismiss them when you're done and another great part of having a cursor and trackpad um, with your iPad Pro is the ability to accurately select text like you would with a MacBook that was one of the strong suits of having a Mac before this update came out or the support came out and as somebody who writes a lot of emails and types up a lot of documents I could see myself in the next two years possibly replacing my MacBook Pro or MacBook Air with an iPad Pro simply because of this because this was something that just bugged me about the iPad I didn't want to take my finger and do it I wasn't a fan of doing it with the pencil just a trackpad feels the best for this type of thing and now we have it on iPad Pro which is super cool so we'll go back home by swiping up with three fingers once again and let's open up some apps that you might be curious about for example Lightroom um, and I honestly like using this app with the pencil but having a fine point of input like a trackpad is nice too let's go to the little adjustment settings and alter exposure for example contrast although I'm making this photo look worse as you can 
see here, you can use the cursor just like you would your finger. And I honestly like this. It feels like I have control. As you can see here, I can actually zoom in on the photo. But as of right now, you can't just like kind of swipe around like you would on a Mac. You actually have to kind of drag and click if you want to move around here. So in unoptimized apps, this cursor kind of acts just like a finger. So it's kind of like using a disembodied iPad screen on your trackpad here, which isn't bad by any means, but I'd like to see, you know, more native support in these apps that people are going to be using with iPad Pro, obviously. Let's also open up LumaFusion, which also kind of has a similar sort of aspect to it at this point. It's not optimized, but you can use the cursor just like you would um, your finger using this device. You can't like click and drag the playhead, for example, like you would in Final Cut Pro, but for right now, you can kind of scroll through and click to play, obviously. And I also won't forget to mention that placing the earbuds in and out of the case is and then of course, you know, drag and drop and manipulate clips as you can see here. So um, in the future, if Apple brings Final Cut Pro to the iPad Pro or if LumaFusion optimizes their app for use with the trackpad, I could see myself honestly editing videos um, with my iPad Pro, especially as these programs get better and better. And of course, if Apple actually implemented Final Cut Pro, um, this is what's making me think, you know, like the Mac and the iPad might merge in the next, you know, five, 10 years because of this sort of support. The Mac OS and iPad OS experience are kind of becoming more blurred. I mean, they're very similar in a lot of ways. The app support is becoming more synonymous. And as you may know, the A12X, not even the A12Z is very comparable to an i5 processor, a quad core one, found in a MacBook Pro, for example. So as I keep saying here, this trackpad support makes this even more of a laptop replacement. And I am so down for that. And let's just open up a couple more apps because why not? Let's go to Safari, for example, and I can actually, you know, type in a website. So let's go to like apple.com, for example, click enter. And then I can use this just like I would a Mac. You know, I'm scrolling through. I can, you know, pinch to zoom. I can, you know, navigate the page. It's really, really nice and smooth. No delay, obviously. And let's create a new tab. As you can see here, my cursor is bouncing to this UI element. I'll look up iPad Pro 2020. I know I didn't put a space in between there. Let's click on a top story from Tech Radar. Sure. Scroll through that. Let's open up notes here. Let's bring it over to the right and I can create a new note. And let's um, copy and paste some text here. So I'll copy this, for example. I can do Command C and then bring my cursor over here, Command V, and there that is. That's so awesome, just like you would do it on a Mac. And like I said, this is a reason why I would ditch my MacBook Pro because this is something I could not stand doing on an iPad for so long. I had an iPad in college. I always hated this. But now we have Mac-style input, which is really awesome. Let's go back home. Let's open up Spotify. We can scroll through some Mozart music, which I absolutely love, by the way. I've gotten into class classical music. I've always loved it, but like, I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of Mozart. I think you should too, especially during these times. It's very calming, I think. And we can, of course, click on the search and I can, uh, you know, click here and search. I don't know. Um, yeah, Childish Gambino. I know that was the first thing to pop up. And then we can click on him and look at his music and go back home. Let's open up the App Store. Why not? Let's navigate through some popular games, maybe. And as you can see, my cursor is popping in and out of these UI elements. I can scroll down. We can click on Tower Lands, Tower Defense, scroll through the photos. Let's go back home. And let's open up Keynote, for example, that might benefit from a trackpad or cursor or whatever. And this is a presentation I made in freshman year after the San Bernardino shooting about how the FBI wanted to open up a couple iPhones and how Apple was very much against that. Let's click play. And this is super cool. You can interact with this Keynote just like you would with the MacBook Pro. Another reason why I might want to replace my laptop with an iPad. Um, and then you can just pinch to zoom out to get out of it. Let's open up Minecraft. I'm actually really curious if the, you know, ASDW keys and a trackpad will work with this. I highly doubt it, but we'll see. Click continue, play, test. If this works, I'm going to scream. This is going to be dope. All right, so we're in and yeah, no, this is this is not. No, it doesn't work. Not yet. Maybe um, the developers will make it work. But at this point, no, you still have to use um, the on screen controls, unfortunately. And let's open Canvas here. See how this goes. We can look at my econ class and just different aspects of it. Let's go to discussions and we can go to the little quizzes tab here and click this. This feels just like I'm on my iMac or my MacBook. I'm in Safari going through this. Um, so that's pretty dope. And then, of course, let's go back to the app switcher here and just swipe through. I'm going to quit a couple apps. I'll quit Minecraft and Canvas and these two apps and 
um, this keynote app maybe my gmail app spotify and then go back home my bad my camera battery just died but even with that i've showed you basically all i can think to show you honestly with this new trackpad support again i am super excited about this i am so genuinely happy that apple is bringing mac os and ipad os closer together in functionality and i think eventually they're going to merge and we're going to see a hybrid device which is honestly the dream for me so do i recommend going out and buying a magic trackpad for your ipad not necessarily i'd say wait for a third party case that has a trackpad built in or just buy apples if you want native hardware but at the same time if you have like a 12.9 inch or really any ipad pro for that matter or any ipad because ipad os is you know available to all of the ipad models if you think you're going to benefit from it or you have one lying around then by all means use that with your ipad you will definitely enjoy the experience and that about wraps things up here i hope this video was helpful once again i'm just super excited about this new way to interact with ipad pro and i will definitely be picking up apple's keyboard and trackpad accessory when it comes out in may and i can't wait to test that out and share my thoughts about it with you and before i close things here like i normally do i just want to say if your life doesn't depend on going out right now in march of 2020 please do your part stay at home social distancing is incredibly important in our fight with this invisible thing that i can't mention because youtube will demonetize me i'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video comment if you have any questions suggestions or opinions and subscribe for more content like this and as always i'm noah and i will catch you all in the next one